Drone pilot Joe Tegmeyer recently confirmed that Tesla has crash tested a Cybertruck at their new Gigafactory Texas crash track. And in addition, he captured six Cybertrucks in the outbound lot ready to be transported. In this video, I want to discuss my opinion about Cybertruck safety and also the significance of the six Cybertrucks in the outbound lot. I'm John and this is Cleaner Lot. Tesla already has a crash testing lab in Fremont, California, but with Gigafactory Texas producing the Model Y and with the Cybertruck production beginning, it makes sense for Tesla to have a crash test lab at Gigafactory Texas as well. In addition, as I'll talk about later on in the video, Tesla also now plans to develop their new compact next generation vehicle at Gigafactory Texas as well, and I believe that's also another potential use for this crash test track. Now back on July 31st, Joe Tegmeyer captured this drone footage and confirmed in a YouTube video based on an official document he came across that this is a temporary crash track. With that being said, I expect this temporary designation to mean that in a few years, it's going to be replaced with a more permanent one, maybe in a different location. Because once again, if Tesla is developing the new compact vehicle there at that facility as well, the crash track will be useful in that instance. I definitely recommend that you follow Joe Tegmeyer on YouTube and on x.com, and I will link to um, both of those down below in the video description. But nonetheless, if you look at these images that were shared by Joe, you can see in this image where it's pretty close up that this crash test involved a front end collision. But nonetheless, when it comes to how Tesla designs the front crumple zones in their vehicles, here is a clip of Tesla's VP of Vehicle Engineering, Lars Moravi, discussing how the front end of a Model Y is designed to protect the occupants in a front end collision. Hey everyone, Lars here in the Tesla Engineering Crash Safety Lab. And I wanted to talk a little bit about what makes our cars so safe. Passive safety is what happens after you get in an accident. We think about that from the beginning of a design. And what we're trying to do is absorb as much energy from whatever object you hit before it gets to the cabin. At Tesla, we always like to think we have two rules. Number one, protect the occupant. Number two, protect the battery. See rule number one, protect the occupant. The way we do that is in a progressive nature of crash structure. This is what it looks, a car looks like underneath the skin. You have your bumper beam, your crush can, and then you have what we just debuted in Austin is our new front underbody casting. And what happens when you get into an accident is first, the bumper beam crushes up, it progressively crushes up the crush pan, absorbing the low speed energy under 20 miles per hour, and then we get into our casting. The design is such that the ribs at the beginning of the casting are thinner than the ones at the back, and we progressively increase them so that we have controlled crushing of the entire system as it goes up before it gets to the cabin here. But what else you'll notice is there's multiple load paths. This is a higher load path for compatibility with other vehicles on the road, Sometimes we need a lower load path if you hit a different sized object. There's space vertically to transfer the load not only through the crush rail, but also through our subframe, which pulls the drive unit down and out of the way from the cabin behind you and out of the way of the battery. But we don't just do that in a vertical sense. We also do it laterally. Your main crush rail is great if you hit something up front, but if you hit a pole or a tree just outside that crush rail, there's nothing there to absorb an energy in most cars we put our lower load path just outside that crush rail and we actually angle it so that if you hit something here, we start to absorb the energy and then we push the car away from whatever object you hit to make sure that you're not getting crushed into that object. We know that the Tesla Cybertruck also has um, large underbody castings in the front and the rear of the vehicle. And I have no doubt that the crumple zone of the Cybertruck is designed in a similar way to the Model Y. And it may actually even be better because this is a next generation vehicle from Tesla. Going back to this image, you can see that the airbags have been deployed and the windshield is also pretty smashed up. Beyond just this front crash test, I'm guessing that Tesla will also be doing side crash testing and rollover testing at this Gigafactory Texas facility. And I expect the Cybertruck will do well in those categories as well. And when it comes to the rollover test specifically, all of the extra weight of the battery pack at the floor of the vehicle 
makes vehicles like the Cybertruck and Tesla's other electric vehicles less likely to roll over versus traditional internal combustion engine vehicles, which don't have that low center of gravity advantage. As you likely know, Tesla has a very strong emphasis on the safety of their vehicles, and they run their own state-of-the-art um, crash testing lab in Fremont. There, they analyze vast amounts of data, not only from the crash tests that they do at the lab, but also from computer simulated crash tests, and they gather real-world crash data um, from their fleet of connected vehicles. The Tesla engineers are able to take all this data, once again, from these various sets and engineer their vehicles specifically for the way that crashes happen in the real world situations. And they can also tailor their various tests that they do on these vehicles in the crash lab um, based on some of that real world experience and the simulated crash tests. I'm looking forward to when the NHTSA gets their hands on a Cybertruck for crash testing because I expect that vehicle to do extremely well. The Cybertruck's extra size and mass combined with the stainless steel exterior shell plus Tesla's amazingly talented engineers and relentless focus on safety give me confidence that the Tesla Cybertruck will be extremely safe and very likely Tesla's safest vehicle yet. Beyond the Cybertruck, I expect that this crash test facility will also be used uh, for crash testing the new compact Tesla, Tesla's next generation vehicle. Because as was reported by this article on notatesla.app.com, Tesla now apparently plans for Gigafactory Texas to be the production hub for their next generation EV platform. So if Tesla is developing their next gen compact vehicle, it would only make sense to be able to crash test it right there on site. Now let's move back over to the Cybertruck and specifically the six Cybertrucks that were in the outbound lot at Gigafactory Texas. As a reminder, Gigafactory Texas production was shut down for a short period of time to allow Tesla to upgrade the Model Y production lines and likely to work on the Cybertruck production lines as well, as was reported by Joe Tegmeyer. Thankfully last week, Joe did report that production had resumed at Gigafactory Texas and these images appear to be confirmation that the Cybertruck production lines are operational. Now we are getting really close to first customer deliveries and it's very possible that Tesla is already building customer ready Cybertrucks because as Joe reported in his September 25th YouTube video, Tesla executives were reportedly supposed to be testing the master candidate Cybertruck or Cybertrucks since two were featured in that video for potential final approval. While I have not seen any official results um, confirming that the vehicle did get final approval and that Tesla is producing customer ready Cybertrucks, it is a strong possibility that customer production has begun and um, these six trucks may actually be ready for actual customers. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also I'd like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.